Ryan Kramer, if we can throw him up on the screen, has a Christmas to remember. Is that Elf playing in the background? <laughs> that is. I'm going full theme. <laughs> He's going my branding. Theme. I'm staying true to form. Oh my gosh, he's literally got the movie Elf it's, playing. It's, it's literally me. playing. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna be distracted here in just a minute and start watching. Yep, there's the pop. <laughs> there we go. Well, welcome, Brian. I'm really excited to have you, and uh, just wanted to uh, give you a minute uh, to kind of tell people uh, where you're from, what you're doing, uh, and what uh, tell tell them the, your favorite part of Elf uh, that we're watching in the back <laughs> real quick for me, because I know you have a favorite. So, yes, my, well, my favorite part of Elf, just to get that out of the way, is when he jumps on the Christmas tree and uh, takes that out out of excitement. <laughs> when he's bouncing over the couch, and I don't know why, but that's, uh, that's my favorite part. But I'm down here in Naples, Florida. We're uh, trying to hold our own. And, you know, it's a little bit hot down here, but as I'm looking on the showroom floor, it's busy. It's a great time to be in the car business, and it's a great time to be – making trouble in the most disruptive time in the history of the auto industry. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thanks. And we've also got Erica Tiffany Wells, uh, co-founder of Wocan and a sales manager at Volkswagen of Marion. Is that right? Did I get that right? I believe so. Um, <laughs> I messed it up awesome. last time. See, he, messed, he messed it up on, on a clubhouse room. But hey, we are so excited to have you here. And um, I te you know what? I, well, I want to start off uh, this session uh, just kind of asking you, uh, earlier when we were in Vegas, you had uh, this statement that we all kind of clung to, which was people is the new currency. And I've really seen you over the last few months and even especially recently, really lean into that where you are at uh, and, and leaning into your sales team. And uh, if, if, if people didn't see it, they can go to your LinkedIn, they can go to your Facebook, I think, and see you making uh, soup for your team. Can you explain a little bit about what that was about and how you were leaning into your sales floors as far as what they need to be for their cust your customers? Absolutely. So we was talking to the sales team because, you know, started thinking, getting closer to the holidays and things kind of got a little bit slower as far as leads and appointments and everybody was around here bummed. And I said, guys, we got to make something out of nothing, right? We got to find the opportunity to make stone soup. And the idea behind stone soup is that uh, there's a guy in a village and he's going through a town and these villagers weren't sharing their food. And he knocks on a door and he takes a stone and he starts to make the soup, right? He's building off this soup and he says, hey, all I need is a stone and some hot water. And he says, I just need a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And soon all the villagers started bringing their ingredients into the stone soup. And we actually created a broth for everybody and the whole village ate. And I just wanted my team to understand that sometimes you have to have the vision of possibility. You have to believe something that's not there and see what's not there and create it. And as a manager and as a leader, it's important for us to create that vision and to create that segue uh, so that our salespeople can stay focused. You know, there's so many distractions. There's a lot of things going on. Uh, we're having an amazing time in the automotive industry, but we also need to prepare for the future and we need to make sure that they are ready for what's to come. Uh, and so I wanted to make sure that they had something different for this Saturday meeting. Yeah, that's it's super fun. So yeah, if you didn't, if you didn't see that, go check it out because it was recorded. But um, so, Explain to me, when, when you are thinking about this, and, and in a time right now where kind of the sun is shining and, and everything's going well from a sales experience perspective and, and we haven't a, been a t in a time of abundance, right? Um, what does it look like for you to kind of, you know, if there is not much there that, that you're seeing, that you're having to draw from these things, what are you leading to? What are you pointing your people to that, that you're having to create something new for, right? Um, and, and a new sales floor, a new engagement, a new customer experience. What are you, what are you gathering together uh, in your sales team saying, hey, this is what we've got to look at to create a, a new soup for our customers or for our experience or for our sales team? Well, for me right now, it's all about uh, an emotional intelligence. I want my sales team to think of their customers completely different than they have ever. I want them to listen with more intent. I want them to have empathy and understanding. Um, I think so many times we allow things to get so transactional. And as the automotive industry moves into digital retailing, I think that transactional uh, part of things can become even more apparent. And, and it's going to be the dealerships that understand relationships and understand their people and understand to be able to create that communication that are going to be able to succeed. Because if you think about the future of it, it's going to become more um, app-like, more robotic, right? And the dealerships that allow the presence of 
human beings to be there and to create a relationship with a client are going to have that kind of advantage, I think, into the industry. I want my sales team to listen with a different ear, to see with a different eye. Uh, and those are the training processes that we go into now is that we're looking at every lead and I said, hey, I know it feels easy right now, but please, please, please don't be uh, confused that this is not exactly what it's going to look like six months, a year, two years from now. And that I agree with you guys, there's going to be a hit, there's going to be a change in this industry and we need to be prepared for that. Mm. Well, and so to, to turn to Brian, Brian, you've been kind of preparing, especially from a technology and marketing side over the last four years um, for events like this, for times like this and, and moving your whole team, especially from a sales perspective, from a variable ops perspective into a whole new way of doing business. So walk us through like what that has looked like and then what's that, what is that positioning you for as you head into 2022? So it's, it's obviously now the, the technology has been connected, which is a, you know, a whole different conversation. But once you get the technology connected, it, it, Google has a study that is called the messy middle. And they do a great job of talking about, you know, guiding an elephant. <clears throat> and they said that the, in the case of this example, imagine a path if you can visualize it. And your, your process is the rider and the elephant is the customer. You're not going to push an elephant it's too big. It's not going to do something that it doesn't want to do. It might move for a second, but it it has to, you want it to move forward. In order to get it to move forward, you've got to remove obstacles. You've got to give clear direction. You've got to reduce mental fatigue so that it doesn't choose to go its own direction. There's enough distractions right now with price and payments and rates and money down and all this, you know, addendums and supply issues and all this other stuff. And in 2022, we're not just going to do it in sales, but we're super excited about doing it in service. And there's so many parallels with the way that we advertise in service and the way that we advertise in sales. But I think it's it's a lot of just reducing the obstacles, leveraging automation, just to reduce redundant tasks. And a lot of associates look at uh, leveraging automation as, are you getting rid of my job or what does this mean? So over communicating all of that, make sure that the journey is going downhill. If you just clear the path of obstacles, like in that elephant analogy, if the process is the rider, the process should just ride, um, you know, the elephant downhill. And the way to go downhill is to remove obstacles, remove friction, remove, and, and we're obsessed with it. We're obsessed with, you know, setting an appointment, uh, you know, from service online, setting an appointment from sales online. How far can they go? Can they, can they go straight through? And every single time there's a roadblock, you go to attack it. And that's all that we're we're doing is you know trying to take dynamite and blow up all the object all the you know friction obstacles. The customers now upload their driver's license, they upload their insurance, they do half of their appraisal, they fill out their their credit applications, and they're doing so much of the work to allow the associates to be able to have that much more throughput. And the goal is to do the same thing with service. But if you want to, you know, you got to give clear direction, not just to your associates but to the, to the customer as to where you're going. You've got to reduce the mental fatigue. You've got to make the process of, of purchasing easier. Your marketing has to be aligned towards making it easier. And the more that we try to do coupons and discounts and you know $19 oil changes or $99 payments, we're getting further away from that. And it creates confusion, which is the opposite of clarity. So that's, uh, that's our primary focus. You know, on that, on that note, talking about the processes, talking about the mentalities, the sales team, the people that you need to power a great sales department, the sales department, not just of today, but of the future. I think this is, uh, I'd love to hear from both of you on this. What are you looking for? What are you hiring for? And how are you cultivating the talent that's gonna succeed in 2022 and beyond? Well, actually, I should probably call on someone. Erica, why don't you take it first and we'll bounce back to Brian. <laughs> Sorry about sure. that. Sure. More than anything, I'm looking for people that are hungry. You know, I say it all the time that you can't you can't teach hunger. Um, when you find people that are hungry, and I think back to my own, you know, beginning in automotive, and I had just I was making six dollars an hour as a daycare teacher. Uh, I was not what you would say is the automotive professional of the future, um, but I was hungry. I had a family to feed. Uh, you know, I had you know young kids, and I was just trying to figure out how to make a way. And, and when you find people who are hungry and they're at the very edge 
of kind of this opportunity to say just I want more. Um, we're able to take that talent and develop it. Uh, you know, I'm not necessarily looking for the old school sales guy that's stuck in his ways. I want someone who's going to be an innovator and open minded that I can coach and that I can train um, because we're looking for fresh, fresh talent. We're looking for people who are going to help change this industry and turn it on its heels. And I need new people to come to the table and sit into these conversations and say, how can we do things different? And the only way you can do that if you have people with a different mentality and a different mindset. So I'm looking for passion. I'm looking for people with purpose. I'm looking for those who are open-minded. To me, everything else is coachable and trainable, mm -hmm. right? Everything else I can show you, mm -hmm. you know, the systems and the tools, you're going to make it easy to do it yourself. But if I can't find leaders and if I can't find people who are passionate and empathetic and, and open-minded and good listeners, um, then, that, then I'm not going to be able to keep them moving and keep them growing into the people that that um, that we need. Very nice, thank you. Brian. So I'm a thousand miles away from Erica, but our uh, our culture is very much what she just described. We want people with a motor. We want people that are proactive, people that want to hustle, people that are passionate, people that care. And that's the number one, you know, experience is, is great. If they are part of an organization that they disagree with, you know what they're doing or what the culture stands for and they want to be a part of something different they want to be a part of something innovative and they want to be a part of that change then we welcome the experience but if it's experience that they don't want to let go of and they don't want to let go of their grip on the way that things used to be and have one foot in the past when we need to two you know a foot in the present and one in the future then that's not something that we're we're interested in but they've, got, they've also got to be solution seekers we don't need anybody we already know all the reasons why things aren't going to happen we can just ask the customer we don't need anybody else to tell us that the customer is going to tell us every single day on the surveys we need people that are going to you know i, I really pride our myself on our, our team's ability that when they identify a problem they always follow up with a solution or two solutions that are proposed, at least they, they start cognitively thinking about how to fix the problem instead of, because it's a it, it's a very bad thing in our organization just to talk about the problems, that blaming, complaining, defending. It's not something that we don't do. But if they talk about that and they say, here here's two ways to fix it, which way do you want to go with? That's a whole different conversation. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think, you know, that having an organization that the culture is, that when you come in here, you have a voice not just for the problem, but for the solution, right? And I heard Erica, I heard you kind of say that, like, I need people that are going to come in and, and immediately make an impact, whether it be at a management level or at a, uh, you know, at any level of the organization, that that's, that that's the idea. So how are you enabling your people to do that, to not just be managers that lead with solutions, but be, be, whether it be the porter, or the receptionist or the newest sales hire, what's the enablement process to giving your people a clear path for that feedback? There's two things that I do. One, we have a steering committee, and I think that it's important to, as you said, hear the voices. So many times the sales meeting just becomes the sales people and maybe the finance managers. But as, as we're kind of pivoting, so to speak, in this new age of the automotive industry, every part of the business is affected, right? Our service department is getting more used cars than ever before. My detail department is getting in faster trades quicker before they can even get them cleaned up and through the back. My customers are coming in seeing fresh trades that have only been on the lot for 24 hours and they're full of the customers still old stuff, right? There's there's this new environment. And if we keep thinking that we're just gonna have a sales meeting and that's gonna fix the process, we're not. These people have ideas. And you'll find some of your best ideas are from the lady in finance, from the receptionist, from the porter, from different pieces in the team that obviously don't often get a voice. So when you create the steering committee and you bring these relationships to allow those people to have a voice and you empower them and you say, tell me how we can make it better. Here is the solution to the problem as, as what Brian said, it's, it's absolutely right. But a lot of these people, they quiet their voice down. They don't say anything because we, we never talk to them, right? We pat them on the back, we say good job, we say good morning, but we don't ask them their thoughts. We don't ask their opinions. We don't ask how, that, how can I make your life easier, your job easier? And in turn, that usually makes the entire dealership better. So we need to be able to make sure that we're listening to all different segments and pick somebody from each department and say, hey, you're gonna be the voice of the department this week. And you're gonna come in and we're gonna have a conversation about the lot or about trades or about, hey, why it's getting backed up in service or getting backed up in detail. And we're gonna come up with solutions and you're gonna let those people fix the problems. And then what happens? You have empowered people who make good decisions that reflect the culture of the team. You know, I've seen salespeople who let little small problems become a big issue with their with our customers, something that probably cost the dealership 50 bucks. But again, because of this resistance and because of this attitude that we've trained them that, 
oh, we're not giving anybody anything away and, you know, tell them to get out of here with that. We're creating the reputation that we deserve because mm -hmm. we won't allow ourselves to empower our people to make good choices that are going to benefit the dealership as a whole. And a lot of times the reason why they don't want to give up the $50 whatever floor mats or whatever is because the other processes aren't tight. And if your processes aren't tight on 99% of your stuff, then you can't afford to just handle the customer and just take care of the problem and, ha and empower and enable, you know, because it takes time. It takes time to have empowerment guidelines and, and to, you know, clarify exactly what they're empowered to do, where their cutoff is and what they, you know, what the time frame is. Do they need to get a WIO signed? Can they just handle it on the spot and then get the WIO signed later? Or do they need to go track down a manager and, and take five, ten minutes to go through the whole questioning process to then get a signature? By then, the customer's like, you know what, I'm done. I'm, and you end up in the same destination anyway. Empowerment doesn't mean that you're just going to give away and it's a, you know, it's a, pro, you know, not-for-profit situation. You're going to give away, you know, all your money. It just means that the cadence or the sequence in which you're doing that or resolving issues is able to be modified and be agile. That's awesome. Hey, I, before we wrap up, I just want to give, uh, because a lot of times we talk to the leadership, the higher level of our organization when we get on these Zoom calls, I'd love for each of you, and I'll, we'll start with Erica, to just give an encouragement to the salesperson that might be listening, um, to that maybe they, they've just gotten in our industry or, or they're, they've been in it for a long time, but to, actually to the salesperson, speak to them, not to their manager, not to the dealership owner, but what's your encouragement to them in 2022? This is your year. You have every opportunity to be a part of this amazing industry. And even though right now you may not be able to see the future and you may not uh, feel with all the uncertainty that you have a place, I want you to know that there is such a supportive infrastructure out here of, of leaders and innovators who, even if you're not in the right place as of right now, there's a dealership that could be the right fit for you. I left the dealership that I was, had been at for quite some time and came 683 miles away to start at a new dealership because they aligned with the values of who I am as a person. And I didn't think that a dealership existed like that, one that had put their family first, one where they didn't require the sales managers and sales people to work 12-hour days a place where it was innovative and progressive and they they cared about their people. I didn't know if that existed. I, I believed it did and I prayed for it. And then boom, like that, it happened, it hit. So I want you to know, just stick with it. This industry is absolutely amazing. What you're looking for is out there and it will come. And you just need to stay prudent, stay disciplined, learn all you can, get involved with social media, get involved with these amazing people, connect the dots, get on Clubhouse because there's so, so, so much out there for you and your best and brightest days are still ahead. Awesome. And Brian, to the salesperson. I would say to find the, you know, to touch on what Erica was just saying, is you got to find the right mentor. You, It's more important. A lot of, so many people get caught up in the money and they get caught up into the next 30 day sprint and the next 60 days. And then what's this going to look like this? If somebody else has a better pay plan, better this, you got to play the long game and you've got to hook up with somebody that's going to invest in you and somebody's going to take time to develop you because this we're, we're going in uncharted waters not that we haven't been already but it's going to be even more disruptive and chaotic over the next two or three years you want to make sure that your wagon's hitched up to the right leader that's going to help navigate you through all this and make sure that they're developing you along the way they're not just telling you what to do but they're telling you why they're doing it awesome well brian erica thank you so much for joining us on the segment uh i, I was encouraged uh, and also, I think that, that we've got bright days ahead uh, with leaders like you in our industry, pushing the industry forward. So thanks for coming.